In the last few weeks, there has been an increasing emphasis, both from NASA and various private companies, raising the possibility of missions to the vicinity of the Moon in the near future. So I wanted to start with a quick examination of this potential pivot in interest towards the Moon, and what the implications could potentially be for future human missions to Mars. NASA is currently studying the possibility that the first launch of their new heavy lift vehicle, the Space Launch System, or SLS, and the Orion crew capsule could potentially carry two astronauts aboard for a nine-day mission to orbital space around the Moon. This study, which should conclude around a month or so from now, could potentially have wide-ranging implications for the Space Agency's plans. For currently, the SLS and Orion is planned to launch towards the end of 2018 without any crew aboard, with the first crewed mission not scheduled until at least 2021, and possibly not until 2023. But if this changing tactic is approved though, it will accelerate NASA's first crewed launch to the 2019 timeframe. And interestingly, there is widespread speculation that this could potentially represent just the first indicator of a renewed drive to push for missions to the Moon in the near term. Indeed, the new administration, if they are truly willing to fund the estimated $500 million that would be required to ready SLS and Orion for a crewed launch in 2019, if they are willing to do that, then one does wonder what the extent of their ambitions could truly be. Now, of course, there has yet to be a public statement outlining NASA's new human spaceflight focus and direction. But the number of private companies pitching proposals for lunar missions does really speak volumes for the kind of discussions that must be taking place behind the scenes. For instance, it was extremely interesting to see SpaceX's well-timed announcement that they plan to send two private paying customers on a round trip to the moon by the end of 2018. Now, this is of course extremely ambitious, requiring both the often delayed Falcon Heavy to launch, along with at least three successful launches of the Dragon 2 capsule, so I wouldn't be too surprised if this tourism mission does slip by a year or so. But now, given that this mission is so similar in its profile to NASA's proposed crewed lunar free return mission, one possibility is that SpaceX is making a political play in indicating that Dragon can accomplish the same mission as Orion at a fraction of the cost. And SpaceX aren't the only company pursuing missions to the moon. Bigelow Aerospace, for instance, which last year began testing an inflatable module attached to the International Space Station, are proposing to deploy an even larger inflatable space station in lunar orbit in 2020. And also Blue Origin have begun distributing a white paper to NASA leadership proposing a partnership in order to develop a lunar lander to transport cargo and habitats to the moon around the mid-2020s. So does this mean that Mars is being pushed aside? It might be tempting to think so, particularly when you observe that SpaceX recently quietly delayed their Red Dragon mission by two years to 2020. But there's a bigger picture at play here. Even if there is a pivot towards the Moon over the next few years, that still leaves both SpaceX and Mars One as companies that have publicly asserted that Mars is their focus. In the case of SpaceX, they have benefited immensely from NASA's commercial resupply and commercial crew programs in order to fund development of their Dragon capsules. So perhaps lunar tourism is simply an alternative revenue stream to be reinvested into their long-term, more ambitious Martian plans. Overall then, I suspect that this renewed lunar push ought to be additive rather than subtractive towards Mars exploration endeavours. Now, in the case of Mars One, they have been continuing to make steady progress in the arrangements for the upcoming third round 
of their astronaut selection process. At the end of January, they received 10 media content proposals from five different countries around the world for the selection round this year. From these proposals, Mars One has shortlisted three proposals for further discussions, with the final production partner due to be chosen by the end of March. Meanwhile, they have been investigating potential locations to host the third round, with one area under investigation being Wadi Run in Jordan, which you may recognise as the filming location for The Martian. On the financial side, things have been going a little bit slower than initially anticipated, as an administrative issue has been holding up Mars One issuing the agreed-upon shares to World Stock and Bond Trade Limited in exchange for the 6 million euro investment signed in December. Fortunately though, this situation appears to have been resolved, as the issuing of the shares required an independent valuation of Mars One Ventures by an auditing firm which has now been received. The resulting valuation was completed by a German auditing firm on February 24th and later reaffirmed by a Swiss auditing firm. Interestingly, the assessment concluded in a valuation of $389.3 million, which is a fair deal greater than the initial estimated value of 107 million euros at the time the company first listed on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. So the good news is that it looks like the wheels are finally moving again on the financial front, though of course I will keep you up to date with any new developments as they emerge. Finally, I wanted to thank everyone who sent in questions and took part in my Exoplanet livestream a few weeks back. There's plenty more content along these lines coming in the future, both in terms of discussing my own research on analysing the atmospheres of exoplanets, and going into greater depth explaining the science behind the major exoplanet discoveries this year that you'll be hearing about in due time. For instance, as some of you suggested down in the comments, I will be making a dedicated video on the TRAPPIST-1 planets, but at the moment I'm holding off until some preliminary atmospheric observations are published, which will be coming out in the near future. In the meantime though, if you do have any questions, comments or potentially video suggestions, please feel free to drop them down below. And until next time, bye for now. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, I produce monthly updates examining our progress towards establishing the first human settlement on Mars, along with exploratory videos on planetary science and human spaceflight. This month's feature video is daytime footage of SpaceX's recent Falcon 9 first stage landing as part of their CRS-10 mission. As always, please feel free to send in your comments, questions and suggestions down below, and don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with the latest developments in Mars exploration and exoplanet science.